Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where Art and I are again hosting our favorite brain whisperer, Steve Campbell. Great to see you again, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So good to be back. Thank you. You know, uh, I was trying to think of a clever way to to lead into this. So let's see how clever this is by a half. Uh, Kenny Rogers sang a song, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. But there are some people who just don't know when to fold them when it comes to gambling. Uh, Can you share any thoughts with us on how uh, somebody might approach this? Well, it's really interesting. One mile away, where we live in Rona Park is the largest gambling casino in California. It's on an Indian reservation. And Mary and I have a joke. We've never, Mary's never been in it. I go in there and gawk sometimes. It's like you might as well just drive by the road and just hand your money to them and drive on. It would save a lot of time, a lot of money. Gambling is such a destructive <laughs> habit. And uh, so let's talk about why it is and what you can do with it. What gambling does is it conditions the brain into wanting more and more and more rewards. There is a hormone called dopamine. And what gambling does when you're hoping to get a lot of money is it releases dopamine into your brain very much like heroin, cocaine, sex, all of those things. But what gambling does is it makes you want more and more and more. There's always that next chance to get the jackpot. You're always waiting. There's always a possibility. And that's so very, very sad. So what do you do with it? Number one, as with every addiction, you need to acknowledge that you're addicted. It must come with your mind saying, I have a problem. And gambling addiction can be so very devastating, not only to you, but to your family, to your friends, everything. Gambling addiction is called pathological gambling. It's compulsive. It's when you just can't stop making that next move. Now, there's some myths about gambling that I want to sort of blast before we build. Myth number one, you have to gamble every single day to be a problem gambler. Wrong. A problem gamble can gamble frequently or infrequently. The point is that you're still losing your money. Another myth, problem gambling is not a real problem if the gambler can afford it. Gambling not only takes away money, it takes away time. It takes away job loss. It gives you legal problems, all sorts of things that doesn't work for that. Myth number three, having a gambling problem is just a case of being weak-willed, irresponsible, and unintelligent. No. Gambling affects all people of all levels, whether they're really smart or not. It affects everyone. So what can you do with your gambling problem? Number one, learn to realize that there are other things that you can do to release that dopamine other than gambling. You can take a walk, take your spouse out for dinner, Practice relaxation techniques, take up new hobbies, learn to do a new musical instrument, do things that are good for you. These are decisions that you make. Are they easy decisions? Of course not. 
because some of the things you've been deciding and saying to yourself, you've been saying to your whole life. But you can make those decisions. And here's the exciting thing about the brain. When you make a decision and lock on to it, your brain rewires itself so that those decisions next time become easier to make. Easier to make. So number one, learn to relieve unpleasant feelings in healthier ways. Number two, strengthen your support network. It's tough to battle addiction without your friends supporting you. It's tough stuff. And you need that network to encourage you. Someone to call you. Make new friends who are not in the gambling area, in the gambling arena. And do things outside with friends. Number three, join a support group. There are all sorts of organizations. Gamblers Anonymous is a 12-step program that helps with gambling. A key part of the problem is to find a sponsor who has been through the same thing that you have. And there are a lot of them out there. As I drive by this casino, oftentimes the whole parking lot, including the parking building, is completely full. So there are people out there who know what you're talking about. Okay? You may be gambling for other reasons, such as depression, stress, substance abuse, or anxiety. You can deal with those through the help of a counselor, a coach, a friend, your spouse. Deal with them and realize that gambling is a very great challenge, but it can be broken. Now, let's talk a little bit about the brain. What the brain does when you give it a new message is that it records that message right here under the prefrontal cortex. When you lock on to a new message such as, I am a non-gambler and loving it, the brain locks on to it. And the more you say it, and the more you live it, the more that message becomes a part of who you are. Until eventually, you don't even have to think about it. For instance, when my father died, he was very young. And Mary said to me, if you die early, I'll kill you. Because I don't want to be a widow for 40 years like your mom's going to be, which she was. I was about 40 pounds more than I weigh now. And I said, okay, I need to lose this weight. And I would get up, swim and run, lose maybe two pounds in a week, but then I would gain it all back on the weekend. I did that for 25 years. Why did I do that? Because I would look in the mirror and say, I am a 240 pound man who's got to lose 40 pounds. And what did my brain say? Okay. You're right. And I couldn't lose the weight. Finally, I said, this isn't working. So I'm going to lock on to being 200 pounds. And I created an affirmation, which is nothing but a statement that when written correctly triggers a picture in your mind of a goal that has already been accomplished. So I locked on to being 200 pounds and ate like one an exercise like one. And after about a year, I was down to 200 pounds. Here's what we can do with gambling. We lock on, first of all, up here. I am a non-gambler. I'm locking on to that. When I go past the casino, or when I see a computer or the internet, I lock on to that's no longer a part of my life. 
And when you do that over and over and make it the strongest picture, and yes, at first it is a challenge, those messages become part of your mindset and then they become a part of who you are. So what can I leave with you? Yes, gambling is a challenge, but there are other things that you can lock on to that will make you feel a lot better about yourself and more importantly about your life. It's your decision. Mm. Wow. Steve, this is, um, this is fabulous because you've not only given us a lot of practical one, two, three oh. kind of do this, do that, but you've opened up, I think, the, maybe the most important thing, and that is your brain. Yeah. yeah. How to deal with, how to use our brain yeah. to change our habits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is a habit. Yeah, it's a habit. It's, yeah. It can be a destructive habit, but it's a habit, right? Yeah. Just like anything else. Yeah. And and we know that we can replace our self images, and we can replace our habit. And you use the right word, John. Replace. Yeah. Don't use the word change. When people say I'm going to change, the brain says, "Oh yeah, good luck. I hate change." But when you say, "You know what? Here's a new way of seeing myself. I'm replacing." the old way with the new way. Mm. That doesn't mean the old way goes away because it doesn't. So people don't get surprised when you want to go back to gambling. But the more you lock onto that new way, the more satisfying it is. And the more you want as a part of your life. Right. That's the way your brain works. And so what you've told us, what you've revealed to us, is the best bet is to bet on yourself. That's right. And That's right. you have helped us unlock yeah. the way to do that. Yeah. Become your own best friend. And when you mess up, and you might sometimes, number one, forgive yourself, and then say the next time I'll call so-and-so. The next time I'll take myself out to a really nice lunch. The next time I'll call my wife. The next time I'll go for a walk. There's always, always, always a next time. Thank Great. you so, You're, so very thank you. much. Thank you for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.